All right, welcome to my Thursday. Now you'll see I'm doing my my live a little bit early today because I have my grandkids, Eli and Rose today. Rose just colored on her face with <laughs> a race marker. When her mom gets back, we'll see. <laughs> we can get that up. We can get down and play. Yeah. Today, they are, <laughs> they are my special helpers today. So, hey, no, no, don't. Okay, thank you. Mm. All right. So, we're talking about emotions, and I appreciate you joining me this Thursday morning. Ah. Let's kind of dive into this because we'll see how much time that I have here to do this. So, emotions and teaching your kids about emotions. So, in case we haven't met, I'm Diane Passy, and I am a, a parent guide and a teen coach, and I love working with parents and teens. This is one of the most basic things that I teach all of my clients and all of the people that I work with. And it's how to name emotions. Super important, a basic skill, something that's kind of been lost throughout the time. And I'm going to give you three tips that make teaching your kids emotions really, really easy. So let's go ahead and get started. Are you going to color for a second? This is a perfectly imperfect example of this video today okay hey bud bud come on over and finish coloring there's there's some markers to color okay all right so here we go i first started learning about how to name emotions and the importance of naming emotions when i heard from i i whenever brene brown mentions a an author or how it's an author i always go and listen to their book and buy their book um, to use. So it's been a couple of years since I listened to this one by Mark Brackett, probably been about two years. And then I bought it because it was so, so fantastic. So it's one of those books. that's just really, really good. Another person that she had on there that I love listening to was Susan David, Emotional Agility. So these are two books that you can go to, to learn about both available in an audio book and in, in print learn about the importance of naming emotions and why it's such a big deal. It's a huge, huge deal. The average person can name about 11 emotions. The top three emotions are happy, sad, and mad. And we just experience so many more emotions in this life. One of the misconceptions is that for some reason, some people think that we're only supposed to experience good emotions when really like God created this world with a rainbow of colors in it. And if he only wanted us to experience happy emotions, then he would have only included maybe those happy, three happy colors and not the sad colors, the unpleasant colors. But God wanted us to experience all of the world while we were here on the earth. So he gave us this full range of emotions that we can experience. And so it's really important to allow yourself to feel all the feelings. If you are somebody who has felt like you're supposed to be happy and you should be happy and you're pushing your emotions down all the time, if they're not pleasant, then this is an especially important message for you today. Okay, okay. so here we go. So, hey, hey guys, 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 guys. Just a second so I can teach. Eli, would you put that down please? Thanks. Okay, all right, so. Here's the three ways that um, you can teach your kids about emotions. Okay, the first thing I want to tell you is make sure as a parent you are naming your emotions. Okay, hold on a second here. I'll be right. I'm going to be back. Oh, maybe this will do it. Okay. Oh man, you guys, this is a hard one for me today. Okay, so naming our emotions. You have to name your emotion as a parent for your kids to hear it because they're not hearing the variety of emotions at, of emotions at school. They hear the same ones over and over again and we use the same ones at home over and over again. So how are they supposed to name an emotion if they don't know what that emotion is and if they've never heard of the vocabulary and what how to use that emotion in a sentence? that emotion in a sentence. So these guidelines are for you, parents, to start doing and modeling that behavior to your kids. And it's gonna make a big difference. This is the mood meter. 
if you don't have a copy of this, message me and give me your email address and I'm, I'll send you the, the three things that I'm gonna talk about today, okay? So that first one being the mood meter. Now, here's how the mood meter works. We have um, over here, we have the pleasant emotions and we come all the way over here to the unpleasant emotions. Then we have emotions that are high energy and low energy. So we have four quadrants of emotions and they're all important. We need to be able to feel all of them. They kind of help you decipher the different types of emotions that you may be feeling in the minute. So a lot of people label emotion like an emotion as anxiety. And it doesn't mean they're not feeling anxiety, but sometimes that's not exactly what they're feeling. Sometimes they might be feeling anxious, but they might also just kind of be agitated and exhausted and irate or restless or defeated or discouraged or disheartened. Like there's a lot of different emotions that we can be feeling along those lines. So we want to have these up. If it were my choice, I would have a copy, a huge copy on the wall of every school of the mood meter where kids can start seeing what the emotions look like. If you have kids who don't read yet, then they, they make copies of these mood meters with emojis on it, all different kinds of emojis that, that are in the place of the words. So you, if you just go and Google mood meter for kids then you'll see, or a little more simplified version with some of the more simpler uh, simpler vocabulary on there that they can catch on better. Very, very important that you have this up and that you normalize. It's okay if you feel depressed. You feel depressed because you're human and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, congratulations. You're experiencing the whole rainbow. And you know what? Emotion is only a vibration and it's only going to last in your body for about 20 minutes unless you stuff it down. So you want to allow all of the emotions, not just the ones you're comfortable with and not just the ones you think you should have. Mark Brackett has something he, you call, that he uses called the ruler technique. And what the ruler technique is, the recognizing the emotions in yourself and others, understanding the causes and consequences of emotions, labeling them correctly, expressing emotions appropriately, and regulating emotions effectively. You can go and you can look at his TED talk that's online. Again, grab his book. You can go to his website and he'll explain more about how we use the ruler technique to recognize and help our kids regulate emotions because we want them to, even when they're feeling a big emotion that they're not sure what to do with, we want them to know how to regulate that and what they can do with it so that they can be healthy and emotionally intelligent adults and teenagers and, and, and young adults and parents and all of those other things that come. Now, this is my second, uh, my, my second favorite, I should say. It's not really a favorite, but it's really common. So I just wanted to show you what it is and I'll send it to you. This is called a, um, an emotion wheel. And you'll see on it that it starts here in the middle and my granddaughter pulled it out. So it normally goes normally a whole wheel, but um, you'll see it starts with basic emotions in the middle, embarrassed, afraid, sad, dislike, alone, and angry. So if you're feeling a negative emotions if or unpleasant emotions, if your teen is feeling unpleasant emotions, if you are feeling something, but you're not sure what it is, and we're used to just generalizing it according to the will, you're going to use this to more to specifically name as specifically as possible what it is that you're feeling. Once you name it, you gain power over it. And it ends up being like this, a way that you take it from being like this big, huge storm cloud into just something that fits into your hand and is easily managed and easily dealt with. And again, it's gonna go away in about 20 minutes. So let's just pick and I'll just show you how this works. So if I'm embarrassed, okay, and I know what it feels like to be embarrassed, what am I, what am I really feeling? And we're going to go out to that next layer. Am I feeling disrespected or worthless, guilty, sheepless, sheep, sheepish or sheepless, ashamed or in, inferior. And then I'm going to go out one more level here and see if I can name it. Am I feeling weak or small? Am I feeling abashed, remorseful? I'm trying to read these as I'm going, humiliated, ridiculed. Some of my clients will be able to just come out here and name exactly what it is. 
other people need some help figuring out what it is they're feeling. Just remember, if you're going to use this, it works great when you're trying to define uncomfortable emotions, but it is only half of the rainbow of our emotions. We have a whole nether side of the rainbow, and it's really important to label your happy and your pleasant emotions as well. We want to be able to identify all of them. So that's the next resource. My last resource is one that I came upon recently that my mentor, Ann Ferguson, um, introduced. And it's a fantastic way to talk about emotions in your family. So I have an emotions jar. And inside, I have strips of paper with different emotions cut up and placed inside of it. And I will include this in your in, in an email if you, if you want these resources. So inside my emotion jar here, I'm going to pull out a handful of emotions. What you would do is you would sit down at the dinner table, sit down on a car ride. Um, you, you can even just do this yourself. You don't even have to do it with your whole family and kind of gain your own emotional intelligence and work on that first. And so this first slip I picked up says valued. I'm going to think, when is the last time that I felt valued? And I'm going to think back and remember an experience of feeling valued. Sometimes I'm going to have to dig like really deep. But when I can remember what it feels like, a time in my life that I felt valued, then this becomes a more concrete emotion, something that you can connect to because you've connected it to a past experience and something that can help define your emotions moving forward. Let's do another one, included. And that would be another question. When is the last time you felt included? And if you felt included, when was it? Where were you? What was going on? And how did that feel? When we read these and we think about it and we talk about it with our family, it, it's a bonding experience and it will help you feel closer together as a family because sometimes some of these emotions can trigger a little bit of like, yeah, you know, I felt really lonely that one time. Some of the tips that I was given that I think are fantastic tips is to not put in the emotions that are uncomfortable to start with. So like, here's one that says afraid. I probably would leave afraid out to start with. And I would choose the emotions in the jar, start out with the ones that are more positive, welcomed, um, deserving. Um, the next one here is empathetic. So I would start with those first, and then I would then you can add the ones that are more uncomfortable in. Once people have kind of opened up and felt like they can share, it's really common that sometimes they're like, I don't even know what that feels like. And you can look it up in a Google, you can look up, up in a dictionary and see what that feels like and, ex and explain it. It may take a while, it may take all day, it might take a couple days to think of an, of an example when you felt one of those emotions. It doesn't matter the length of time. What matters is you're searching in your brain for an experience where you have felt that emotion. You're connecting, you're sharing it with your kids, you're sharing it with your spouse, you're sharing it with your friends, and then you're able to feel like um, you know, understand that emotion better and you get that emotion. And it regular, like it um, makes it so our emotions are valid and normal, that no matter what your emotion is, is you're totally normal. This is a, just what happens. We're, we're totally, you know, there's nothing wrong with us if we are feeling an emotion. Everybody has felt discouraged at some point. Everyone has felt envious at some point. And so we own our emotions and we talk about it. And we let our lives be a rainbow full of emotions, not just the emotion that we think we should be feeling. It's really so common for you parents who have teenagers. This is what many, many, many of them think. If I tell my parents that I'm depressed, I'm sad, I'm discouraged, I'm frustrated, my parents are going to try and fix it for me instead of letting me be what it is that I'm feeling. And I wish that they wouldn't try and fix it. I wish they would just allow me to feel that emotion. So they, they want to be heard. They want our parent to say, oh man, I understand. That sounds really hard. I'm so sorry that you feel that way. You know, and just sit with them, allow it to be, but not to fix their emotion. 
allow them to feel all of them. And I'll tell you what, as a parent, this is a skill I may be working on for the rest of my life. It's really hard to let your kids feel sad and depressed and discouraged and not fix it. We want to fix it. That's what we do. That's what that's why we're parents is because we love our kids and we want to fix um, their problems when we when they have a problem. And instead of valuing their human experience and normalizing their human experience and allowing them to feel what they feel because they're awesome and they're amazing and it's going to make their life richer and better and fuller. All right, those are my those are my three things for you today. So we've got the mood meter, and along with that goes the ruler. And of course, message, email, let me know if you don't have copies of these, and I will email, put them in your inbox immediately. We have the emotion wheel, which helps you to figure out what the negative emotions in your life are. And we have our our emotions jar where we can become more emotionally intelligent by expressing uncomfortable emotions and expressing experiences good or bad and hearing each other and what it is so i hope that the, this will help you be able to become more emotionally intelligent in your family you can visit my podcast episode that i just released yesterday talking giving you a little more information talking about emotions and I will see you next week. We are going to be starting such a fun, like, I'm so excited. I have a series coming up that you guys are going to love. And I've been working on it for several weeks now. So it won't be next week. Next week, we're going to talk about perfection, crippling perfectionism. And then the week after that, we'll start the series. So I've got some good podcasts coming up. And I can't wait to share them with you. Thank you for for sticking with me through this. And I hope you guys have an awesome day.